For those of you on the Landmark forums who might be interested in using UDK, the Unreal Development Kit, to start prototyping your designs before Landmark launches, I thought I'd go ahead and make a very quick tutorial on how to get started. So first things first, go to your browser and simply type UDK. Our first link here is unrealengine.com slash UDK. And on the right, you see the link download UDK. And the latest release is from July. And so we will begin downloading it and I will pause the recording in the meanwhile. Okay, now that it's down, uh, downloaded completely, go ahead and open the file. And as soon as it begins installing, you have the uh, license agreement, so go ahead and accept that. And here you have the choice between an empty game or a, a UT sample game. Make sure you have UT sample game selected. And you can save it wherever you like. I'm going to go ahead and save mine to my other drive here. and go ahead and install and now once you reach the screen here you can go ahead and select next because we don't really need those and we'll go ahead and launch the UDK alright so now as the application opens you should be presented with something kind of like this on your screen um, we can go ahead and close this welcome window and this here is our content browser and we're not going to need it right away but as soon as we start talking about materials then we'll go ahead and take a look at that again and now if you don't have a single viewport here you might be seeing this view right here which is four different viewports if you have all four viewports open then you can go ahead and uh, use each of them to look at it from a different angle so this is a side view, front view, top view, and perspective. And uh, this top upper right hand corner here of each of these displays allows you to maximize it for the entire window. Hold down right click and move your mouse to look around. And you can use the WASD keys as well. And so let's take stock of what we have in our default level here. Um, right here this is a player start and if we hit this button up here it allows us to play the level and walk around in it pressing escape will get us back out of there we have this green volume that's surrounding our whole area here you can see it if you highlight it there and uh, that is our light mass importance volume and if we keep that surrounding our entire structure then that allows the lighting to build quicker so if you build beyond the size of this platform, make sure to expand the size of this around it. And um, then as well, we have this platform below us, and we have this cube, and we have the sky as well. If your computer is running kind of slowly, you can go ahead and hit this button up here, and that allows you to turn on or off the uh, real-time rendering of the uh, skybox. Now for this cube, there's actually two things here. There's the uh, static mesh cube here, and that you can see readily, and then surrounding it also, uh, if you click along its edges, you can find the builder brush, and I can slide that up. And so you can see, now there's actually two different items there, and we can go ahead and get rid of this static mesh, just go ahead and select it and press delete. You'll notice the shadow remain behind, that's going to stay there until we rebuild our lighting which you can see on top here there's uh, build geometry so if you've made any changes to your uh, your brushwork at all uh, or build lighting in case you've changed any of the lighting at all or build all will take care of everything and so I'll go ahead and select build all now so you can see uh, the lighting update and once that's completed go ahead and close this and you can see our shadow left behind by that uh, static mesh cube is now gone now this brush here, whenever you select it, you can see right away there's red, blue, and green arrows. This is the translation widget which allows us to move it around. And then as well, uh, you can press space, that allows you to rotate it along some axes. And press space again, that allows you to stretch it out to make it larger or smaller. 
Notice whenever you press space to cycle through these different modes, you're also highlighting these buttons up here, translation mode, rotation mode, scaling mode. And there's also a fourth option, which you can only select from the toolbar, which is non-uniform scaling. This allows you to scale it in just a single dimension at once. And on the left side here, you can see under brushes, we have different kinds of brushes, back to the original cube that we had. You can also turn it into a cone, curved staircases, cylinder, and so on. Uh, each of these, if you right-click them, it brings up a properties window that allows you to adjust some of the variables for each of the different specific kinds of brush shapes. And um, I'll go back to our original cube, and you can see below these brushes, uh, we have four buttons here. The top two here are Add and Subtract. These are the ones that you'll be using most often. So if I were to hit CSG Add, right away we've added some uh, geometry to our level with the default material on it. And uh, I can hit Control Z to undo that. Um, and then subtracting would also subtract that volume from previous shapes that we've already made. So uh, I'll add that again, and I'll go ahead and go back to scaling. Made it make it just slightly smaller and maybe translate it over a little bit so it'll intersect with the edge and I can hit control S and I've just subtracted some volume from the inside of that cube and these other two buttons below for intersect and de-intersect that allows you to uh, simply reshape the brush depending on what it's overlapping at the moment so I can move it up a little bit and I can hit the intersect button and my brush now is only in the space that was intersecting with that roof there that we had just made. So we know how to add shapes, we know how to subtract shapes, and we know how to readjust the size of our brush and the shape of our brush to meet our needs. So how do we paint an object? If you remember when we first opened the application we had something called the content browser open. If you look up here on your toolbar next to the binoculars you'll see open the content browser. So go ahead and click on that. And there's a lot of different things in here, uh, but we want to look for specifically materials. So in this object type column, we click on materials, and that will filter it for just that kind of uh, asset. And then, say, uh, you could just browse through this in the window, but maybe we want to uh, find a specific kind of material. So let's say, maybe we want to make this box out of concrete. So if we just type in concrete, it'll bring up everything with concrete in the name. And so there's this material here, and to apply it to any of our surfaces, it's as simple as clicking on it and dragging it over onto that surface. Now, once it's on this surface, we can adjust a lot of the properties by uh, right-clicking it and going to Surface Properties. This allows us to uh, pan it by 1 unit, 4 units, 16 units, 64 units. We could do some simple scaling, so we could make it, say, uh, 4 times larger, or make it twice as big. So we apply it, now it's twice the size that it was originally. And we can also do uh, custom scaling, so say we want it to be uh, two times larger in that dimension and maybe five times larger, maybe five times larger in that dimension. So we hit apply, now it's nice and stretched out. And so that allows us to uh, adjust the properties as well, say for instance we spare content browser back up, here's our concrete, we'll go ahead and apply it to this back wall as well. Now if we want uh, these uh, two walls to behave the same as far as the materials go, we can select them both by just holding down control and clicking both surfaces, then right click and go to surface properties, and now this surface properties window applies to both of the surfaces. And so we can scale them both together, or we can uh, or pan them both together, or we can scale them both together. And that allows us to uh, uh, take care of that. And if we have, uh, say, two different floors adjoining, we could select both of the floor surfaces and make them planar, which allows it to basically, so it treats it all as one big surface. So that about covers uh, all the basics for building with the brush and painting the surfaces with materials. You can save the file by clicking on File and then Save Current Level. You always want to save it in your Contents directory. Um, and uh, avoid using special characters in the file name. There's a lot more that UDK can do than what you've seen here today, uh, including cinematics, terrain, AI, and if you're interested in learning more, I suggest checking out the video tutorials by 3D Buzz on YouTube, or also you can check out my own tutorial series at Brainspace Showcase on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and have fun building.